Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are Singaporean, you must have heard about the whole Daryl Aiden saga already. I kind of meant to do this video some time back, but I got really busy and I didn't quite get to it. Although now nobody's really talking about it anymore, I thought I would still like to do a video on my thoughts. Here is a very quick recap. Daryl Aiden Yao is a Singaporean influencer who calls himself a pro photographer. And on his feed, there are many amazing pictures and he has been gaining followers really fast with about, I think, 100k followers and he's getting a lot of advertising deals with many big brands. On June 15, 2018, Mothership, which is a local news website, they published an article with proof that many of Daryl Aiden's photos on his beautiful Instagram feed are actually stock images and sometimes with himself actually photoshopped inside the stock images. So many of the photos were actually for advertisements. He has been claiming that he is the photographer of those images and he even claimed that a stock image that he bought was taken with the Sony camera that he was sponsored but it's actually not taken by a Sony camera at all. Neither was it taken by him. I'll link to the article down below so you guys can read all about it. So I guess what happened subsequently was that there was this explosion of memes, okay, with people also photoshopping themselves into beautiful stock images backgrounds and kind of mocking Daryl's captions with the hashtag Daryl Aiden challenge. The funniest thing is that even very big companies and very big brands kind of joined in the fun. At first Daryl Aiden gave an interview to Mashare News after the whole saga citing all kinds of dumb excuses like oh I paid for the stock image so they are not stolen and yeah clients uh, knew that he was using the stock images and they are okay with it and how there is kind of a fine line as to whether creating original work based on stock photos was still considered plagiarism and he also said that people may not understand the work that goes behind creating such shots. Yeah, allow me to roll my eyes. If he were just a normal influencer, him using stock photos is not really a big deal at all. I mean, it's still kind of loserish and funny to photoshop yourself into exotic locations and claim that you went to those places when actually you didn't. But that isn't really an ethics issue. The big problem is that he's actually saying he's a professional photographer and claiming that he took those pictures. He's using other people's hard work and talent to actually gain recognition for himself. He isn't trying to get credit for his digital manipulation skills, which are actually pretty excellent, but to get credit for being a really good photographer. So the whole photographer part is the key here, okay? Anyway, afterwards, people started scouring through his feed of over a thousand pictures and they were finding more and more plagiarized stock images while Daryl Aiden himself was very busy deleting picture after picture. The news became so big that even international websites were covering it. Daryl Aiden eventually wrote this long public statement kind of apologizing and claiming that, you know, his dishonesty did not extend to his work for his friends. And then a day later, he actually deleted or archived all of his thousand over pictures leaving only one apology on his page and he has not updated since. Okay, so now that everyone has caught up, back to my thoughts. One day before the Mothership article was published, I actually received an email tip-off uh, about Daryl Aiden, okay? Presumably, the same email was sent to Dekosh and was sent to Mothership. In this email that I got, it showed pictures that were actually stock photos. Those pictures that the person sent to me were from 2017. The captions were some generic shit like uh, Lupin Wonderland or whatever. I guess Daryl Aiden didn't claim he took those photos, although he definitely did not credit the original photographers lah. Okay, so I need to digress from the topic of Daryl Aiden a little, okay? And I just need to rent. Hear me out. Everybody sends me shit like that, okay? Expecting me to expose people. Doing things like that have gotten me a lot of attention and I would not have the career that I have today if I didn't do any of it. But <sighs> it's a fucking shitty job, okay? Just to be clear, when I do any expose, I love the attention that comes with it. Okay, I love everyone kind of discussing what I wrote. I love it when I get a lot of views and I love having so much engagement with my readers. And yeah, I do love the sense of power and influence that I get. Over the years, I've come to realize that people are kind of increasingly grey when it comes to ethics. What is a very clear-cut, morally wrong move to me just might not be viewed the same way by many other people. Yeah, so take for example MLM, right? Many people actually don't think that it's wrong at all. And I guess MLM is still like vaguely defensible, but you'll be shocked to learn if you aren't one of those absurd people that there are many people who have told me, right, that they think that gush cloud inflating their stats, getting bloggers to write negative reviews about competing brands, influencers not declaring a sponsored ad, influencers buying fake followers, like literally there are people who don't think that all these things 
things are wrong. It's like these idiots, right? They don't even think beyond the surface to the deeper implications of allowing all these dishonest actions to go on unchecked. Nobody's outraged except for me. I mean, even if people are, nobody really wants to say anything because they either don't have the power to make a difference or they are just scared of the consequences. They just don't want to be the bad guy. And what happens when I am the one doing the expose? First, I make enemies with the people that I accuse. They all take it freaking personally and many of them do try to take revenge on me. Why should I put my safety or my family's safety at stake or you know risk a personal lawsuit? I mean even if they don't take revenge right, I'm constantly reminded of how I ruined their life, how I should use my power and influence for good instead of using it to shit on others. Like it's my fault that people are dishonest. Is a reporter also supposed to feel like they ruined somebody's life when they report on any wrongdoing? And number two, I get accused of having ulterior motives. Be it to take personal revenge against ex-friends or kind of trying to take down competitors to benefit myself monetarily. So for example, during the Gush Club saga, instead of discussing unethical online advertising practices, people instead chose to debate endlessly on how much Nafneng paid me to write the blog post or how much I will gain in share prices. Seriously? The answer is zero and zero, okay? So number three, my own life gets caught into scrutiny. Every time I talk about something controversial, the first thing that people do is to dig and say, hey, you also do the same thing, what? And of course they'll fail, right? Because obviously I didn't do the same thing. If not, why else would I go and bring it up? And so the next best thing that they will do is to accuse my friends of doing the same thing and me not exposing my friends. And therefore I am bias and have an axe to grind against them. Their accusations are of course not true but still I really just hate it when my posts kind of implicate the people around me. Number four, do not underestimate morons. So many people truly do not see why, for example, it's wrong for an influencer to go and buy followers and then cheat advertisers of money by selling their ads at a much higher price than they deserve to get. Instead, these idiots will tell me things like Hey, why must you be so kaupe? People are just trying to make a living, you know. Why can't you just let it go? This is actually none of your business. Why must you constantly find trouble for other people? What joy do you get out of people's misery? Whatever, it's a fucking thankless job and I'm sick of doing it. Let dishonest assholes be dishonest assholes. There are too many to catch anyway. Why would I even bother to do exposes? I just end up being called a bully. Forget it, you want to do dishonest shit, just go ahead. Sorry, I went off tangent for a bit, but it's relevant, okay? Because when I saw the email about Daryl Aiden, I just felt a jab of extreme jadedness, if that's a word. Like I'm just so tired of it all. It's another day, another practice that people want me to expose. But if I do it, I suffer the consequences of doing the dirty job. Fuck this shit, no thanks, 1010 do not recommend. Okay, so back to Daryl. I saw the email and I thought, Okay, there are only two photos here that are stock photos that he stole and it's pretty long ago plus he never said that he took the picture so it's not that bad right? There's really nothing much to expose there anyway. So I decided on a softer approach. I actually forwarded that email to a mutual friend who also knows Daryl. So this mutual friend, let's call her Alice, she asked if she can forward Daryl the email to see if he can kind of explain what's going on. And so this is Daryl's explanation. He said that he already addressed this plagiarism issue on his IG stories long ago. Okay, I don't know if it's true lah. Uh, because he said that other people already complain about it. He also added that the two plagiarized images was actually from long ago and uh, back then somebody actually uh, complained about this issue to Jia Chong and she told him not to do it anymore. So since then, which is 2017, he has stopped doing it. And he also said that he bought the stock photos to practice his Photoshop and he just didn't think too much about it and he just posted his digital artwork. He did not know who to credit because sometimes stock images, they didn't cite who the photographer is. So I heard all this and okay, it sounds very reasonable, right? I mean, I don't know if all these are true, but I guess I just took his word for it. He didn't self-proclaim to be a photographer until later. So I guess image manipulation without crediting is kind of a little bit dishonest, but I guess if he didn't claim he took those photos and he stopped doing it long ago, then it's not that bad. Daryl asked Alice what he should do and whether he should delete the photos and Alice came to ask me. So I said he should go back to those two photos and kind of edit the caption to clarify that the pictures were not taken by him. That was my advice. So at the back of my mind, I guess I did think, you know, if a random follower can find two photos, I bet there must be way more photos that just aren't caught yet. I just let that thought go because Daryl just really sounded very contrite and very, very sincere. 
However, while this set of events was happening to Daryl, unbeknownst to him, somewhere in the mothership office, someone already started their detective work on his IG feed. While Daryl was deleting incriminating pictures and editing captions to not seem like he's taking credit for other people's photos or pretending to be in an exotic country that he never set foot in, the mothership staff were busy doing their screenshots and wondering why Daryl's photos were kind of like going missing as they went along. Well, Mystery solved, it was me. I'm the idiot who tipped him off. The next day, imagine my surprise when I read the Mothership article. As I read on, I just got more and more pissed off, okay? Nabe, this bugger, he totally lied through his teeth to me by Alice's proxy. It's clearly not just two photos, it's probably hundreds more. And what is worse is that the last stolen photo was literally like a few days ago before the Mothership article came out. So it was a bald-faced lie that he stopped doing all this shit since 2017, right? As for whether it's true that Drea knew about his shady practices and stopped him long ago, I actually went to ask her and here's her answer. I guess to be fair to Drea, even if it's true that she did know about it, what would you do if you were her? Just imagine that you catch your best friend doing this shit, okay? You tell him, hey, can you please just stop? And he just patronizes you and says, oh yeah, yeah, I won't do it anymore. But then he continues to do it. I mean, what are you gonna do? Is it something that you would actually break a close friendship over? It's a really tough choice and I think I think Drill was put in a very difficult position. Personally, for me, I'll start to drift away from that person. Yeah, but it's just really hard. I thought about this a little bit and you know what, digressing a bit, friendship nowadays just really sucks, okay? I don't know, I guess I just really miss the times before the internet when you're so innocent, okay? To decide if you like someone as a friend, you only took into account how they are like in real life. Now, you got to like both their offline persona and their online persona because if there is like a disparity between the two, you will often develop this feeling of, I don't know, disgust towards your friend and it will just kind of like grow and grow and grow until you cannot really stand them in real life. I'm sure many of you have at least one friend who's just really kind of like pretentious or annoying online and you totally like him or her in real life but you're just kind of so grossed out by their like fake online image. This phenomenon is just gonna get worse because people are so hell-bent on one-upping each other on social media. So people just keep posting more and more stuff to show how amazing their lives are. And since anyone can kind of get like thousands of followers online, you know, people get famous, they change, they get addicted to the fame, and they will do anything to maintain it, including having a completely fake online persona. I will not keep going on about this because it's a topic for another day, but life is hard. Why must life be so hard? Okay, sorry for digressing again. Back to Daryl Aiden. This is where it starts to get more interesting. So after the whole saga exploded, I actually received this DM from a follower of mine and she claimed to have spoken to Daryl about this plagiarism issue all the way back in 2015. That's like 2.5 years ago. I have no way to verify if her screenshots are real of course, but here is what she sent me. Okay, so this girl, she claimed that Daryl Aiden posted a picture on his feed belonging to somebody else and she knew about it. So she kind of posted a comment asking him about it. Hey, doesn't this photo belong somebody else and he actually went to delete her comment so she actually went to dm him and told him that she's very disturbed by his feed because she chose a random sample of 12 photos and when she used a reverse google search she found that seven out of 12 were actually not taken by daryl at all that's crazy right she warned him that if his actions were to be found out it would actually cause a shitstorm for him and his reputation as a photographer might never recover I mean, talk about a freaking prophecy, am I right? So this girl was really, really, just really nice, okay? And she ended the DM by telling Daryl that he's just really, really talented and he didn't need to do this. Here is Daryl's alleged reply. Hello, oh my god, it never occurred to me that that was the impression I was giving. In no way was I trying to make it seem like I took those photos. Thank you so much for telling me. I'll definitely do whatever you suggested to play it safe. Thank you very much, I really appreciated it. And then she sent he made a nice message and then he was like thank you so much you made me very aware of my actions i'm so sorry if i upset you it won't happen again thank you so much for letting me know again i wouldn't want to get into trouble or get bitched about have a good night are you serious that was so freaking disgusting he sounded so nice and so sincere and so sweet right and then what did he do he simply ignored this nice follower turned around and continued to plagiarize pictures for the next two and a half years 
I mean, it's the same bloody thing he did to Alice, right? Kind of act like he was so apologetic and so humbled, but I don't know, is it all just lies? You know, people have told me that they actually found his public apology like sincere and kind of well written. You know, I don't know, sincere? Seriously? If that is truly how he felt, then why did he give such a contradicting interview with Masha News where he sounded, I don't know, completely unapologetic? Rihanna says it best. Don't tell me you're sorry cause you're not. And baby, when I know you're only sorry you got caught. So I guess the question is, now that I know on hindsight, what Daryl Aiden actually did, do I wish I actually did an expose on him instead of doing the kinder thing which actually ended up tipping him off? You know, I still don't really know the answer to that. Part of me, of course, wished that I was the one to do it instead of Mothership so I can get all the fame. But another part of me is just really happy that somebody else did it instead of me and that person did a great job too so I don't have to feel guilty about ruining somebody's life. Although, technically, it's his own doing that ruined his life, not Mothership, okay? <clears throat> but yeah, that's on you, Mothership. You are the bully now, not me. Woohoo! And I don't have to fear for my safety and I don't have to feel bad towards my friend Alice or, you know, I don't know, feel really awkward when I see Daryl Aiden in future. You know, I take that back. Because after this video, it'll probably still be really awkward if I meet him. So in conclusion, I don't think that Daryl deserves like death threats or like, you know, people really just hating on him and whatnot. Because yeah, he was kind of like being really dishonest in his attempt to gain fame and recognition and earn money. But you know, he didn't actually go out and hurt anyone. That being said, I still think he's a garbage person who has no qualms about lying to get his way. And to me, that's just kind of like more gross than the whole stealing photos thing. I don't know. So we've come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for listening to my ramblings about this whole Daryl Eden saga, about friendships online, about what to do if your friend does something kind of like, you know, dishonest uh, online. What would you do? What are your thoughts? Please leave me a comment down below so I can read them all and I will do my best to reply all comments, okay? And I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!